Hello everybody. Today we are going to be talking about phasers in relationship with capacitance and inductive circuit elements. Now here's a scenario. Given a circuit, we have a resistor, an inductor L, and a capacitor C. And the question is to calculate what is the impedance, the total value of these three circuit elements together. Now here's the problem. The values of the inductance and the capacitors are at two different coordinates compared to the resistor that is in, in real value. And in order to put these two elements into the correct direction of where the resistors are, we have to understand the concept of phasers. Now, I've made a video, a previous video, showcasing how to calculate complex numbers. So if you don't know how to do that, you can check out the video that will be posted somewhere around here. Now that you know how to calculate complex numbers, let's see how we can calculate the impedance Z given the understanding of phasers. So to recap, phaser is a complex number that represents the amplitude in a phase of a sinusoid. Now the complex number can be put into two different forms. The first is the rectangular form. denoted as z is equal to x plus y j and the second form is the polar form and that is denoted as z is equal to r angle of its so for the rectangular form this is what we're going to be focusing on to calculate our circuit element now the z is simply the impedance that we need to find and x is the real value and y j is the imaginary value so now we understand the basic concept of phasers now how can we, we relate that to capacitance and inductance so let's start off with capacitance The basic fundamental definition of a capacitance is that the current leads the voltage. So now we have the sinusoid frame right here and we have two different waves. By current leading the voltage, that basically means that this sinusoid I'm going to highlight it right here. That this sinusoid is the current. And this wave is the voltage. And they're out of phase of each other. And the phase difference, we can highlight it right here is 90 degrees and that 90 degrees translates that into the polar form and if we want the rectangular form that is simply J so that's a sinusoid frame for the phaser in the capacitance since current leads the voltage in addition to that since the current leads the voltage I haven't emphasized that actually means that it is minus 90 because it's leading now that we got that from the sinusoid frame, we have to focus on the complex frame to see what it will look like in this particular scenario. So we have the complex frame, and since current is leading the voltage, minus 90, this is what it will look like. So this axis is the current and this axis is the voltage. Now that we've got an understanding of how this frame works, now we have to translate to the rectangular form. So our capacitor equation, utilizing the knowledge that it is minus 90 degrees, this would be what it is in its rectangular form. 
and that would be 1 over JWC. Now we know by the complex identity of 1 over J, that is equal to minus J or minus 90 degrees. And that is why 1 over JWC could be translated to minus J over WC. Let's move on to our inductor behavior. So for phasor relationship with the inductor, it is the polar opposite of the capacitor and that means that the current lags the voltage. So let's focus on a sinusoid frame. So we have these two phase, phase uh, waves again and their phase difference will be 90 degrees. But now, since current lags the voltage, this is the current wave. So this is the current wave. And this here that is leading is the voltage. So we'll highlight that current and then voltage. And the phase difference will be positive 90 degrees. And if we draw that in a complex frame, this was this would be what it looked like. We have the current here and the voltage here. This is plus 90 degrees. So that's our phasor relationship with our inductor. Now how would we compute that into a numerical equation to calculate our circuit? So getting back onto this slide, our inductor equation will be JWL. And W, I forgot to mention, would be the angular frequency. So now that we've got our capacitor equation and our inductor equation, now we can move on back to our circuit element. So getting back to this topic, L is equal to 3H, and C is equal to 0.2F. Now let's find what, our, what these values are. So first for L, that is equal to JWL. W, or the angular frequency, is equal to 4, given here. L is equal to 3. So what we get is 12J. For C, our capacitance, that is 1 over JWC. And that value, since we know what the angular frequency of that is 4. And then our C capacitance is 0 0.2. What we get is 1 over J. 0.8 and then if you want to put the j in the numerator that is equal to 1.25 and then we have the negative j because based from our complex identities 1 over j is equal to negative j so now that we've given l and c Let's write that down. We can calculate what our impedance is. So the three values are the resistor plus the inductance plus the capacitance. And those values are 5 plus 12J minus 1.25J. And in the end, our impedance is 5 plus 10.75 J. So that's how we calculate the impedance given the knowledge of phasers. I hope everyone enjoyed this video and I will see you next time.